Hello and welcome to Tights TV. Uh, after match thoughts on Stevenage. Yeah, I think, you know, we, this is going to be going. We're going to be calling it out for, uh, for what it is. Uh, Ryan Babir, the Tyke, as always, mate. It's a pleasure you can join us. Yes, man. Um, I don't know where to start on this one, mate. Uh, did I think we we're going to go to Stevenage and get a result? I thought it was going to be a draw, if I'm being honest. I couldn't have seen it being a, being a win. I just think that uh, Stevenage didn't know what to do to upset us and unrest un, un us. But then again, we haven't been doing us any favours previously, uh, Ryan, in the past few weeks, past few games, to be fair. What were your take on Stevenage game, mate? Um, well, I'll start by saying fair, fair play to Stevenage. Um, yeah. I thought I thought they were really good, mate. They, they, fair play to the fans travelling and all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fair play to the fans that travelled because it was, yeah. you know, it was a, a Tuesday night and we've not been in best of form. You know, fair play to the fans that travelled. Um, I have to say, you know, Stevenage pressed us from front and our back three had absolutely no idea yeah. what to do. They were, they were, they looked shocking, mate. But fair play, fair play to Stevenage. They, they won the game and they deserve to win the game. I don't think there's any. Anybody that can deny that we were unlucky in any way, shape, or form. So I just want to start off with that. I don't want to, you know, take too much praise away from from Stevenage because I thought they were, for, for large parts, they, they, I thought they got the game plan bang on and and, and you know, and they did what they needed to do. Um, uh, it was just so poor um, from start to finish. Neil, um, defensive errors yet again. Morning. Defensive errors, mate. Just that that you know what I mean. Where. There's no way he should be able to get to that position to shoot, and then getting beaten. You know, Robert's getting beat on his near post, mm. so you know so easily getting beat on his near post. He left too much, far too big of a gap, um, and you know they just let him dance in and 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 and, and get a shot off. And it reminded me a little bit of those two goals that, that Lincoln scored, the second and third goals, where they were yeah. just able to dance into area unchallenged mm. and, and get and get a shot off and score yeah. when, it, when it should never be happening. But, but I mean, the, the warning signs were there, mate. They were on top for most of that game. They missed you know, some chances. We, yeah. we, we, we got that 1 0 lead, you know, and it was a good throw ball. Great time run by Adam Phillips and a nice finish. But I mean, it worked like, shoot, could, could we say it were against the, against the run of play? play? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah. for five minutes after we scored, we looked, we started looking all right. You know, we had that chance with Russell, which were literally the only flash of nice football that we played. Mm. It was actually a nice move and got through. And I don't want to slate to John Russell too much. Probably the worst person for it to fall to, to finish. Mm. But then again, the strikers are not in that much form, are they? So um, I think keepers probably made a good save as well, but he should have probably dinked it. But anyway, it, it was a nice move. And then the Phillips one, that when Phillips went through and he's decided not to shoot and and then he was going to play, try to be clever, play a passing for McAtee to knock it in a back post and passed it to Stephen, his defender. Mm. It would just, I think that would Why? just, <laughs> it just start. But the, the defensive errors, mate, they could have had five or six last night. Yeah, you know, they well, close. they had quite a few. They're good, good, good errors. I have to say, um, you know, Roberts did make a couple of saves, but he made a couple of hours for for goal. That second goal, that's just that's that's Sunday league, that Neil. That's well, before, we get, league. before we get to There's second one. goal, before we get to second goal, first day. So, so the, the like you said, Via. The writing was on the wall early, early doors from Stevenage. They were pressing the game plan. Evans, he knew what we were doing. He knew how to upset us. He knew yeah. what our priorities. And I'm glad you said that about uh, comparison to Lincoln game, how easy we just coming through our defence and for, for the first yeah. goal, right? But a cross came in. I forgot who crossed it in now. And it crossed it box. And at the time, I think we are about two, three defenders, our defenders, jumping up for the same ball. I'm thinking, yeah. what the hell, you... Does anybody know or shout him? But what I did not like when they scored, right? When Stevenage um equalized, what I did not like was the player's reaction. You've got Williams throwing arms up the air and blaming people. You've got uh the rest of the defenders, Cardin and etc. And they're all shouting and blaming one another. And they're all, oh, you do this, you do that. Oh, and then you, I think someone up front, it might have been Phillips, is gesturing to get over there. And why is he allowed to do this? Why is he allowed to do this? Because none of nobody on that pitch here is talking. They don't Nobody know is they communicating. They look like strangers, mate. They look like yeah. they don't know what they're doing. And 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 the and style. This one look like. And we the go style. back. Yeah, we go back. No, it's right, mate. We go back. We go back to the leader, the character, and the person, the stronger person on the pitch, which we have not got all season, and now it's going to fruition. 
It's coming to end of the season when you need that kind of person, even more so now, going into where we are. Where is it? Where is it? There's nobody. And it, that's his own down doing. But we've got away with it so long. And now, now it's happening. People start to call it art. But it's a bit little too late. This should have happened way back in season. It should have been yeah. addressed. But again, we've just plodded along. Oh, we didn't play off. So we're nearly up in, champ, in top two. And we'll go, come on back in a bit. But again, the player's reaction, I'm looking at my captain on that pitch. He should not be pointing this and blaming him and blaming that and blaming other. It shouldn't have been allowed to get to that situation. It should have been uh, uh, someone on that pitch taking control of the game. There's nobody at the moment on that pitch taking control of the game. And this no. is why we're getting undone all the yeah. time. It's pissing me off. Mate, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go on. It, it, for me, it's this. It's the style of play, mate. I mean, how long? Why? Why have we complete since the Bolton game, right? So we've had plenty of time to address it. That were eight games ago. So we've played seven full, you know, seven games since then. Hmm. So why have we abandoned what we'd done that that had made us that got us into the really good position that we were in? Mm-hmm. Why have we abandoned that style? We've completely abandoned that style of play. Hmm. We are just. Passing it sideways, sideways backwards, lumping it to nobody all the time, Neil. It's all the time. Yeah, ninety yeah. percent of the balls, it probably more are inaccurate. It's Last like it's an up, isn't it? Balling. It's it's an up, mate. They're just punching it up front. They're completely bypassing his midfield. So we've got probably as more talented players in midfield within the squad at the moment. So Luca, mm-hmm. Adam Phillips, and Kane when he's playing, you know, and we're completely bypassing midfield and going to going to strikers. Half of which at time can't win ball, can't get ball out the feet. They're not nodding, you know what I mean? They're not winning the ball, just going straight mm. to the keeper. The defenders are defending it easy. Or last night, the amount of times it went into touch, he's just what they're playing rugby. Mm. You know what I mean, what they're they doing, kick it, kick, kicking for you know, or kicking for yardage, kicking for you know, kicking for possession. Well, what they're doing, they're mm. just punting it. The amount of times it just punted straight into touch were unbelievable. The amount of mistakes that we made at the back, um, is. For me, it's wooden. Massive, massive concern, mate. And, and yeah. like and like Doug O'Kane said in, in, in Chronicle Write Up, you know, he can't see the style of play. He can't he can't spot what the style of play is. He doesn't understand. <coughs> you know, and nobody can as fans. I can't even get it. I'm I'm trying to work out what they're trying to do. Mm. And I can't work it out, mate. I can't work out what's happening. Um it's 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 poor at best, mate. And if we don't rectify it. Which at the moment I can't see as rectified. I can't see this changing because if you're so belligerent to keep on with this completely ineffective style of football that we're doing at the moment, it is completely ineffective. We've been at it for seven games now. It's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? All the way, although last yeah. night was particularly poor. Um, it, it's so ineffective, but it, it won't change it. A during the game, if he knows that you can't see it's not working, he doesn't seem to have the ability to be able to change it. And um, B, he's not—he's not changing it from from game to game. He's not realizing that it's not—it's just not working. And we were we were playing nice football at one point, Neil. You know, sort of from November through to January, Feb, you know, into well into February. The vast majority of the time, we were playing good football and we we're playing mm. nice. It, 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 we looked like we were favourites to go into second place. And now mm. we're literally holding on to playoffs by his fingernails. What I don't understand why we've completely abandoned that. You know that style of football that we were playing that all weren't always the best, but it, it was a, a damn sight better than what we're playing now, and it was effective. Mm. We were winning games, and we got ourselves into a really good position in the league. And since that disappointing two-all draw with, with Bolton, I don't know if it's that that's that's having a lasting effect. But as professionals, you should be able to shove that to one side and, and yeah. bat on. It's only it's only one game. And it's only two points dropped. Yeah, you should be able to. To, to rectify it and why are we playing this style it's it's crap nail it's boring it's ineffective it's it's it, 90% of the fan base is lost 90% of the fan base if you look on social well, last night yeah. so if you th- this style of football surely surely can't be that pig-headed and that stubborn to keep pushing on with it to so what so at some point you can go yeah I told you it'd work out eventually or is he just pre- you know is he prepared to roll that dice is he prepared to take that chance and let us just whimper out of the playoffs because that's, that's what's going to, that's what's going to happen, mate. That's what's good because there's not just we were worried about Lincoln last night with six points. Yeah, six mm. points behind us, and we, if we'd have pushed the nine points with four games left, it's pretty much secure then, isn't it? But yeah. now we don't. We go, we go, we go and make a bollocks of it, and we lose. But now on sixty-seven points, the Stevenage 
and Blackpool. Yeah. Only seven points behind us. He's yeah. Sw- sw- <laughs> flying ahead, you know, swarming ahead like bloody vultures waiting for us to slip up. And one yeah. of those teams, we've got to play away, who have not yeah. lost at home 11 games. Black- yeah. Blackpool, by Blackpool. the way. Yeah. Mate, we, it, it, we're we banging trouble. And I'll, I'll be honest, it might just be the fact that I'm a bit upset with recent form and the fact that we've gone from such a strong position to now in a, in a, in a dangerous position. If we get the playoffs, what are we going to do in playoffs, seriously? I mean, without a massive turnaround in form and tactics, Neil, we're not doing anything, mate, in the playoffs anyway, even if we get them. We'll go out in semi-finals and that's it. So, what's the... Oh, I don't, know. I don't even know. I don't even know what the answer is anymore. I don't even know... Because when you say, when you listen to... When you listen to his interviews afterwards, when you listen to... Um, Collins and then and then Nicky Cannon afterwards. You just say and and the and the questions coming from the press team. You just say I'll back, I'll, I'll back there then because I'll get on about yeah. that yeah. and I'll, I'll tie it into where we could have been and where we are now. And then the 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 the, yeah. <clears throat> okay. the comments by Collins and that because this is the oh. I think this is happening a bit regularly with Collins like now. It's a bit of a church where he's coming up with stuff. And the worrying concern for me is. Hearing a player similarly following what he's saying is a way, and that's a bit of a are you really that switched off and you're not understanding it? But again, yeah. it might be just me reading it. But I'm, com- I'm coming back to the second half, they scored free kick. Some people are blaming Roberts, he should have got down, it's set up at wall again. It's one of them, you know, it's gone in. Yeah, for me, Stephen has deserved it, they were up for it. Yeah, people were like saying, Oh, we should have had a penalty. It was Stonewall. I've also seen, to be fair, some people say, Well, call if it had been stronger, it should have straight through. It should have, it should have rolled back. Should have shot, yeah, it, it probably should have been a penalty, it, you know. It's, it's, but then you're clutching a straw, he's, 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 he's put his hand, hand on his shoulder. But penalties aren't guaranteed goals, Neil. And you can't, be relying, on, on, you yeah. can't be relying on referees to give you penalties to get you. Got VR, have we? So, no, you've got to. You can't be relying or, or uh, complaining about penalty decisions not given to, to mask over a poor performance. No. It would have, if it had been to all, it would have, would have been sat here saying it was a poor performance. Yeah. And we're you know, happy to come away with a point. That's what we'd have been saying. But it was still mm. a poor performance. Um, it would have great, a hugely poor performance. But it's one of them, isn't it? You see him given, see him not given. What Cole should have been doing is concentrating on getting a shot. I saw, I saw Luke Connell do it early. Said, oh, we got, got a bit of a break." And mm. He tried to instead of getting on with it, he tried to buy a foul that ref weren't having it. Yeah, I mean, one of them again, 50-50, It could have been given foul, not given this foul, but he's definitely tried to buy it. In mm. the second half, he's gone down left hand side. We've got a break on. He's going out. Um, defenders jockeying him, and he, he throws his stand up floor. Yeah, and it. it just get on with the game. Just, just get on get with the game. Let's get, let's get ball moving. Let's not try. And, what we're trying to buy fouls there for? Let's get we on know with what it. Sta- we know what standard referee has been like in League One, so it's not going to come as no exactly. surprise. Don't that, leave it in referee's hands to give you a penalty, and then yeah. also you've got to score the penalty. You know, calls six, seven, eight yard out. Mm. If he's stronger there, he gets a shot off, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you said, so uh, it's one of them. I'm, I'm not. Should it be a penalty? Probably, mm. um, and then could have been a red card, but. You know that don't mask or, the, or or make any excuse for, for for the performance as a whole at all. No, no. I'm going back to uh, performance and that. I again, Collins baffles me in what he's saying. I've always, I've always respected a manager that calls it as it is, regardless of who it is. Uh, any any manager or coach, any club. I'm not. I don't like it when they try and come up and they say, "Well, we're doing this or we're okay with that," and try and deflect it. Look. Concentrate on your team's performance. Under Duff, we had that. You look at other managers in other leagues, like I said, they'll call it out. You'll get likes such as Wenger when, when he used to get questioned that oh, I didn't see it and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And I'm thinking, just answer it. You get a lot more respect off the fans. I'm but sorry. one thing for me is that when Cadden, when he got interviewed, and I thought he must be watching a different game, mate, they said we dominated it in times. Want to be back at Wembley, get fans summit to cheer us on. Do fans need to stay with us. Fans need to what, stay with watching us. Watching Dross like that, really? Fans need to stay with us. That's a bit of a... So we've got to support you even but Well, we always support Barnsley, but because it's been a inept performance, 
yeah, be sure there's displeasure. Fans will have travelled down, we've paid our uh, money. You're more or less like saying to the fans, you need to stay with us, even though we have been mm. throughout the season. My mate would have been there. It's, 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 it's not just one, it's not just one bad, it's not one bad react, it's not one bad game, is it? It's not a, it's no. not an overreaction to one bad game. We're, no. we're on like like Again, like Doug O'Kane's wrote in the in the in the Chronicle, this is not just deluded fans. This is this is a sports journalist giving his giving his uh, his view. It's not just a dip in form. This is a crisis. Yeah, where we're, we've you know we've conceded sixteen in the last few games, and we're we're playing terribly. And 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 like he said, can't even work out what the style of football is. Can't mm. even work out what the what the aim is. It's just lumping it up front. And hoping for something to happen, and it is not working. And it, it, the concern is that we just keep doing it over and over and over again, and it's just not, and it, and it's not changing, mate. And um, I, I, I don't know. Is it is it time for him to go? That you know, I think are, are the board going to do it? Seriously, I mean, probably not. I think most of people's opinion, if you look online, most of the vast vast majority of the fan base want him gone um, yeah. because you know it's like I suppose it's that argument of. Well, you know, at least it gives us a chance if we get someone else in. It gives us a chance to do something in playoffs because mm. we're not going to do anything in playoffs with Neil Collins, certainly not playing the way that we are at the moment. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of them questions. It's one of them things, isn't it? We're saying we, we need him out and need him gone. It's not going to happen there. It, it, no, it, it's not going to happen. At this it's time of season, they're not going to get rid of him. It, it, it's as simple as that. So mm. we're just going to have to, we're going to have to grin and bear it um, and see what and see what happens. It's not going to be great. Um, like I said, we've got some games coming up. We've got some, and again, for me, tricky games. We've got Reading at home, Portsmouth away, then you've got Blackpool, and then Northampton at home. And that's what he said, Vera Ryan. I'm, I'm looking at the table right now, mate. You've got Stevenage on 67, Blackpool 67, Lincoln on 68, Oxford 72, and 74. Out of, them, out of them remaining games, Vera, and it sounds daffest, but I could see Reading game being a draw. Our own form's been abysmal. Yeah. Portsmouth. We're going to lose it, yeah. isn't it? If we, if we play anything like we played oh, in, like in the last few games, mate, they'll, 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 walk, they'll walk up at the top of us. Yeah. Blackpool, like you said, away. Again, I can't see us getting out of here. And, and at this rate, I could see us going into Northampton game. Me, at home, pressure on us. And I could see us fluffing it, me. Really yeah. making a... A there's, a, there's, a strong, there's a strong, there's an, there really is a strong possibility, Neil, because the, this is the way. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be over emotional and, and have a knee jerk reaction. This has been, no, you got to, you got to, in consideration. I'm not, just, I'm not just bumping my gums for, for sake of bumping my gums and, and being negative for sake of being negative. I'm just, you know, I've tried to be being realistic, really. But if you look at the way we've played in the last seven games, Right for the, for the majority of it, played yeah. okay against Carlisle and had a decent half against B B Burton. Rest of it's been absolutely dross. It's been mm. rubbish, right? Just crap football, right? We've only got four games left. If we continue to play in that vein, we won't win another game. We're not winning another game. That we'll lose every single one, or maybe draw, maybe pick mm. up a couple of points. But that's it. It's 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 so ineffective that that style of play. And it's so easy to defend. They must have been, they must have been laughing last night, Stevenage. Yeah, it's easy. It was, it was like we played Cheltenham and 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 Cambridge. Defenders must have been just like, I keep doing this all day. And in fact, in fact, the um, the commentators last night, Stevenage, the Stevenage commentators last night said, um, "Long may this continue. Long may Barnsley seem to be doing this. Seem to be lumping ball up front. It's really easy for us to defend. This is long may it continue." So mm. they, they, they spotted it straight. And that, that was about 15, 20 minutes in, mate. Yeah, just playing so, safe with the hands. So it's... If we don't change dramatically, which, again, we've been saying... I can't see it happening. We've been saying it, uh, it, if it doesn't <clears throat> change dramatically, we will fall out of playoffs. We will, yeah. because there's too many teams behind it. It's not like we're relying on Lincoln to slip up and maybe we, maybe we get away with it, because there's Lincoln, there's Blackpool and there's Stevenage. Mm. Behind us, Oxford are probably if they keep on their form, are probably going to jump over us into fifth, you know, into yeah. fifth place. Yeah, uh, you know, if one of them teams slip up, are, are, are the two going to slip up? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so sure. And it sounds, it, it, you know, seven points between Stevenage and Blackpool between them and us, and then only six between Lincoln sounds a lot for four games, but 
It's not, mate. It's, it's not. not. If, you play, if it's not, if you're playing the way we're playing. You could so, come, Ryan, this time next week, and potentially we could be on on scraps because you've got two games. We'll so this time, I, I, I don't know, know if next Tuesday, I don't know if um, Lincoln have got a game next Tuesday, but we could literally, by next Tuesday, be out of playoffs, mate, if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their goal. I, I don't know what their goal difference is, but I imagine it's better than ours because they've been they've been giving some teams some rate while they? Lincoln's really? goal Lincoln's goal difference is twenty six. Yeah, ours is twenty, mate. So it literally, could be if they win the next two games and we lose our next two, we could be that we'll, we'll be out of playoffs. Yeah, it's, it's that it's, it's that it's that easy, isn't it? It's that easy yeah. for it to happen. And oh, I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling that that Saturday's going to be a bit toxic, mate, if I'm being honest. If it don't yeah. get going, if we start pulling, we start doing that shit football again, mate, we start doing that passing it right back, yeah. it's going to get hostile. And I think that'll have, an, obviously, How weird is this? Like have a negative impact on the team. But fans have had enough, mate. Fans have had enough for watching this football. You said it They've earlier, right? Watching it. It's boring. It's dull. It, and, it, and more, more importantly, it's completely ineffective. It does not win us football games. We've... You know, it might have scraped by in 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 results throughout the season, early part of the season. You but said it they've, got us figured out, mate. they've got us figured out, and it's just it, and we're so, we're so easy to to either beat or take points off at the minute. We're so easy. You said it earlier, Ryan, right? And I'll well, I'll close off on this, and we'll we'll see where we go with it. You said it earlier, right? We are a matter of weeks weeks ago, uh, weeks before, we're looking. Potentially, we could have gone second, right? And now, for me, it don't, and, and I don't know if it's just me, I don't know if it's other fans out there with people that know your thoughts and that in comments. For me, we are now gone from like second spot, potentially, when we're yeah. all again geared up and excited, automatics. We've gone drastically, drastically off form. We're looking behind the shoulders and hoping we're just going to win Robert Lyon into playoffs. For me, it don't feel like we're in playoffs. It feels like at a minute we've got no to play for. We this time you know, last year, like this yeah. time last season, we were up for it. We were like, yeah, let's <laughs> go in. We'll go into semi final. This for, for for me, I don't know anybody else, but for me, it does not feel like we're in the playoffs and to get geared up and all, we, all we potentially we could play. It don't feel like that for me. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because it's the brand and style of football that's being played or trying to get played or whatever we're trying to do on pitch. But when we were under Duff, we sent to have that more intensity, that purpose, that self-belief, yeah. the player sent to happy, chirpy. This time around for me, I'm looking and I'm thinking, <coughs> we haven't got it. We, we're missing his mojo, if, yeah, if, if I'm being honest. I thought exactly the same thing, Neil, this morning. It looks like the style of play that we're doing, it looks like we've got no to play for. It looks like, you know, we can't go, we can't go down. It's mid-table. Lads are looking towards summer holidays. We're just literally going through motions. That's what it looks like. I'm, I'm pretty certain it's probably not. There's obviously things going on behind scenes or whatever. Mm. There's something not right with, with, with what's going on. Mm. Um, but um, that's what it looks like. It looks like, I mean, it, it, we were 2 1 down at times at second half, mate. They just, they were just strolling. There were no yeah. intensity. Yeah. And no intensity until last. 10, 12 minutes, but even then it were intensity without without much, you know, without much results at all. Yeah. I thought Jallo looked quite good when he came on. I thought he were unlucky with that, you know, it were a decent effort from Jallo. Um uh, and I mean, I know we've said about Jallo not starting before, but I mean, if you look at the way the strikers are performing, is it an opportunity to put Jallo in? Is it, you know, I probably I probably still wouldn't because he's still young, but He's only he couldn't one. do any worse, could he? Yeah, he, he? No, exactly. It looks like only one that's got any sort of fire in his belly to do all. Because mm. rest of them, rest of the attackers at the minute look 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 woefully off um off form, mate. Um but it's funny you say that about Duff, mate, about making the comparisons to Duff, because I saw a write up on, on, on Facebook this morning. Really good piece um by a lad called Simon, and he's put it on. And it's a lot, it's a bit long-winded. I've read it out, so I don't I'll, I'll not I'll not pick it out, but he said stuff about people saying about the defence and how he were dealt a difficult hand, um, mm. um, Collins, with, with the people that were brought in. And he made some really good points because he said, if you look at our defence that we had last season, up until, up until obviously, Bobby Thomas come in, Mads Anderson, yeah, mm. when he first came, he were, he were a liability and we got him from a, yeah. a, a team in Denmark. Because what he's trying to say is, 
we didn't have said we've not we've not got any experience centre halves, but we've never had experience centre halves. Hmm. Mads Anderson got brought in from a Danish second second division team, and were a liability for a long time. And hmm. you know, you, you only really hit form through COVID form, time, wasn't it? Until, until and through COVID, yeah, and through um, and through League One last season when he really yeah. peaked. I don't think anybody at start of start of last season when Matt Mads Anderson were at start of last season, as much as we love Mads, mm. anyone would have, would have suggested at that point at the start of League One last season under Michael Duff that he would have you know he could only be a, a top championship Premier League defender. True. Yeah, true. And he said same about Liam Kitchen. Liam Kitchen <laughs> in Championship season, he was a liability. He was a liability, mm. weren't he? And a lot of time in League One last season, he was a liability, but he got better and better throughout the season. And when we brought Bobby Thomas in, again, we brought Bobby in. Bobby's obviously doing really well at, at Coventry. But prior to that, he'd played 21 games for Barrow. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, then, then had a, a, a mostly half a season at, at Bristol Rovers. So League One had been his highest level mm. at that point. So th- there's not much experience in there. We got Liam Kitchen from Forest Green. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're sat there saying he had that, he had that um, defence. But it the, it was the better coaching. It was the better coaching that's done it. For, yeah, I agree for, with that. It's yeah. the better coaching. And it's not like we bought, we had three defenders that were bought in from championship teams, is it? We've, we've developed those through, mm. through through better coaching. And um, people talk about Pines will look for weeks since we had Pines. He played four games. Come on. Mm. It's not that. I mean, I love him, Pines, and I think he'll be a great addition. But he were running in for four games, so you can't say we've looked good since. <laughs> it's like he only played. He played an handful of games. That's not. Yeah. That's not. That's not an argument you can use. And it's like he mentioned about Josh Earl as well. When Josh Earl come in, he looked a world beater. He looks. He looks. He looks quite. You know, he's struggling now. You're looking you at know, a gap who's going to improve. Yeah, improve exactly. players, so is, it, yeah. is it the? Um, is it the coaching? Is it the poor coaching? Is it level of coaching? Because uh, you know the argument is that if you look at every single player. That were on that field since either since they got here or since they were with us last season, they've got progressively worse. Yeah, the answer. So you look yeah. at Kane, Phillips, Luca. Fair point. Yeah, fair. They're point. all. There's none of them as good as they were last season, mate. Yeah. You know. It's a good point, but actually, it yeah. is. It would a really good. It's a, it, it, I'll try. I'll try to find link for you and send it to you, mate. It's a really good. It's a. It's a, it's a really good write up, yeah. and it's worth. And it's a. It makes some really really valid points. So. Um, and it's it's interesting because you know you think about saying oh we've always had experienced centre halves, but if you look at two of his best centre halves in recent times, which are Mark Roberts and Ethan Pinnock, both non league, both both bought from non league. Mm. So yeah. you know we're having to go at the board for buying non league non league defenders, but it passed. It's worked out really well for us, and mm. then they've been sold on for good. You know they've gone up, moved, moved on to bigger teams, but it's when it works out then that we give the grief that the, the, the board grief. Um, and when it don't work out, sorry, when it don't work out, and it, it, like it has done, it, we, 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 that's that's when we give him grief. But it, it's a model that's worked quite a bit in in the past, buying in experienced defenders and making them better. But it's just, I think, it a lot. It's down to maybe it's the recruitment and the level of the player that they've bought. But is it down to the level of you know of, of how well they've been coached? Because like I said, even it may even even Liam Roberts is getting worse. Yeah, and he was an absolute starlet, and he's he's making he's making mistakes. You know, he were he were at fault for. First goal against Charlton, he, he took a took a massive step to his left, and he should, mm. you know, what I mean, and, and, and left that side of his goal open. He got beat on his near post last night, and then that one straight out middle is just mm. last night. It's just that Sunday league that yeah. I've seen it. From, I've seen it from back. Somebody somebody had shared it um, from Stephen Agend. Yeah, he, I saw that as well. He just, yeah. leaves, he just leaves a massive gap under his body. Mm. He just leaves a massive gap under his body, and it, and it goes straight under him, and it's he's straight out middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was probably not set up right. But it's straight down middle. I mean, you know, what I mean, anybody should be able to save that. I mean, he's just, and he's just let it go straight under, and it's just the whole team seems to be seems to be getting progressively worse. Get worse and not improving. So yeah, yeah it's yeah, fair point back because, like I said, you, you look at a coach and a manager, and I said last season, I think when um, yeah, I think last season. Got invited from clubs uh, at a press conference with Duff, and then I think not long after interviewed some of the players last season. And one of the questions what I got asked was, you know, and I asked it is that with this with the talent what we've got in the youth and the setup back then it was I said back then still Barnes played by the way, such so as mm-hmm. like your Ackroyds. 
and your marshes, your jallows, are they going to be, oh yeah, going to be improving and looking at the, the youth we're under Bobby Assel, to develop them, fetch them through. And he, yeah. he seemed to be on that. And like what you said, yeah, so it's a good write up by that bloke, Simon, I think he said. Is yeah, that... I can't let him get his surname, but it's on Facebook anyway. So it's actually seen, uh, forever read, I think it is, or one of them, or one of the forums anyway. But and then when you look at someone like that, you're looking at Duff as also a man manager and a coach. And I remember like now you're saying that when it used to be warm ups, the amount of times when we were practicing uh, the defenders, Duff would go over to his three central defenders. Oh, we're doing it, yeah. Got... yeah. So we're doing it. It was yeah, always nothing, wasn't it? Matt. Yeah, good point, Matt. Yeah, he was always yeah. warming him up, wasn't he? Well, he was a centre back himself, wasn't he? So yeah, he was at Burnley. Yeah, yeah. He was a, I, I know Colin was centre back, but you don't see him doing that. You know, Duffy was always out on field, wasn't he, with him? Yeah, well, good shout, that. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to have a read of that. Um, right, people, thanks for watching. Uh, Ryan the Beard Tyke, as always, mate. It's a pleasure getting your take on things. Let us know your thoughts. <laughs> um, we will be doing another video for any game coming up. That's going to be fun, isn't it? Um, but yeah, uh, let us know your thoughts about Stevenage game. You know. Collins, like we said, socials are pulling it. Enough's enough. We're whimpering of it line at minute. Can you see us turning it around with the last few games? What what's remaining? What's gonna change? Surely something's got to happen. But like what we've said on here, we've played that long now since the Bolton game. We have no real purpose. It's gonna bite us in bum kind of thing. And like you said, uh, Ryan, Doug came from a sports journalist. He's actually called it art as well. So Again, when sports journalists see it and call it half what it is, us as fans, we're calling it half to see it as what it is. It's one in times ahead, mate, even though we're not in playoffs just. But we'll move on to the weekend. Uh, like I said, we'll get a video done for the Reading game. And we'll see where we go at weekend. It's going to be a tricky one, but hey ho. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, as always, thanks for joining. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, one thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>